First and foremost in the elimination of workplace incidents is planning. When planning for hoisting operations, you need to consider the load and its weight, and the types of equipment that will need to be used and choose the right equipment for the job at hand. You'll need to consider the weather conditions, such as hot or cold temperatures, or wind and lightning, and how this weather may affect the workers, the equipment being used, and the load being lifted. You will need to identify and manage any workplace hazards, review the job site rules, and determine what permits may be required. Communication between team members must be planned, and your team performing the lift needs to be involved in the planning process prior to the execution of the work. If hand or radio signals will be used, the crane operator, signaler, and personnel involved in the lift will need to review the signals to be used. You'll need to determine what personal protective equipment will be needed and ensure that it is available and that anyone needing to use it is trained to inspect and wear it as required. If the load or the lift operation may expose workers to hazardous materials, safety data sheets may need to be reviewed. You need to ensure the personnel assigned is competent in the tasks they will be performing. The planning stage will also need to include inspecting the path of travel for the load and crane and whether there is a danger of the rigging equipment or the load getting caught up in or striking structures, equipment, or workers in the vicinity. You may need to plan for barricades to prevent vehicular or pedestrian traffic from entering the lift area. The crane's path of travel must be assessed to ensure the ground conditions and proximity to other cranes and structures will not create a hazard during the lift. You will need to consider the swing radius of the crane and ensure that the planned movements are safe and don't come within unsafe distances for overhead power lines in the vicinity. Overhead obstructions need to be considered. Pre-job planning is critical to having work done safely and must be done with employers and workers involved before the work begins. If any deficiencies or concerns are identified, work must stop and these concerns must be addressed immediately with everyone involved whether it's before or after work begins. Work should not begin again until all concerns have been resolved. Workers must be familiar with the emergency response procedures in the event of an accident or incident on their work site. This would include, but is not limited to, emergency numbers, evacuation procedures, first aiders, location of assembly areas, and or meeting points.